Hello, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today we're going to go over a complex topic that confuses a lot of people. We're talking about video connections. Now, this is an ever-changing field, so that I'm sure that this video is going to be outdated soon after it's released, but at least this will get you up to speed. Video connections can be organized into two categories. We have analog and we have digital. You can see I have them separated out over here. Analog, we have composite, S-video, VGA with RGB breakouts, component, DVI analog, and DVI-I. And over on this side, digital, we have SDI, we have DVI, DVI-D, we have HD-SDI, which is a high-definition SDI, we have 3G through 12G SDI, which are up and coming and currently high speed versions of the SDI. And we have HDMI, which everybody's mainly familiar with, and DisplayPort, which is mainly used on PCs. As you can see on this chart, we have it also organized according to its definition. In the red, we have standard definition, which is typically 640 by 480. We have high definition, which is in the green boxes. You can see here that VGA and RGB can also be high definition. Over here, we have in the blue, ultra high definition, which is basically 4K. But some of the up and comers, like the faster versions of HDMI and DisplayPort and 12G SDI can handle 8K. So this part down here in the blue is mainly the piece that's gonna be outdated really quickly because the technologies are changing, which is why I didn't go into HDMI 1.2, DisplayPort 1.2, etc. I just left it at the general HDMI and DisplayPort. To start it off, we're gonna go all the way back to the 1980s. We have composite video. Composite video mainly comes in on a single RCA connector and as you can see here, it also is often run in tandem with two audio channels, right and left. So you'll have a yellow connector, which is your video, and your two audio connectors. This over here is another type of composite video. It also can come in on a BNC connector, which is this guy right here. BNC is most often related to SDI connections, but some of the old school technologies especially in the commercial arena, rely on B and C to carry your composite signal. Next up is S-Video. It came along with the invent of the VCR. S-Video separates out your color channels into each of these pins, which allows it to have a sharper image. The problem with S-Video is that the connectors, the pins, are fragile, and often the users will twist it when they're inserting it, and it damages both the connector and the pins. S-Video can go a long distance with reasonable clarity, but it's outdated. VGA with RGB. VGA is not RGB, however, they can be interchangeable. VGA separates out your colors along with your chromants, which is your black and white image, your brightness. It can also carry bi-directional information of the display, like your resolution handling. Over here, you'll see an RGB breakout. You'll have a VGA on one end, and you'll have a breakout of BNCs at the other side, or you'll have a breakout of RCAs. VGA is still often used with many PCs. The longer the VGA cable, the higher the amount of ghosting, and VGA cables are prone to damages especially right here, right after the connector. Just a little bit of bending and the channels will start mixing and you'll get some really bad rainbow ghosting on your screen. And it gets worse the further from the point of origin. Component video. Component is the first high definition analog video signal. Component is Y, PB, and PR. Y is chromance, it's a black and white image, and then it separates out PB, which is your blue color band, and PR, which is your red color band. And the device itself mixes those to create your image. By separating them out, you can have a sharper image at the destination. Component video also has to have a separate audio channel. Often you'll have a five RCA cable running between the source and the destination. DVI-I and DVI-A. DVI-I has four pins right here along the blade. And those four pins are basically the same thing as an RGB signal. Down here you'll see a DVI-I. DVI-A actually has only a couple pins in the connector and you'll almost never see those. DVI-I and DVI-A can also be high definition channels, albeit analog signals. Now we're gonna take a step into the digital realm. We have SDI. SDI takes a low definition signal and it puts it over RF on a coaxial cable. It's terminated with B and C connectors which are push on and twist connections. The problem with SDI, although it's cheap and easy to install, 
SDI can't easily be converted into other formats. In order to convert it, you have to run it through a conversion box, which is actively powered. It has a microprocessor in there, which converts the RF signal into a digital 1010 type of signal. SDI can also encompass 3G, 6G, and the 12G signals. 3G, 6G, and 12G are for 1080p, 4K, and up and coming 8K. At the current time, when you're running 4K over SDI, you're going to see four coaxial cables or mini coaxes. They're each running at 3G SDI. As manufacturers support faster chipsets that support 6G and 12G SDI, we'll see more 4K and 8K handling of SDI signals. DVI-I and DVI-D single link and dual link. Down here you'll see a DVI-I single link. It's got the space which you can see here and you'll have DVI dual link which has got more pins. This is a DVI-D digital because you don't have the four pins around the blade. You can see here no pins. Here you can see the pins. If you have a DVI-D dual link try and stay DVI dual link from point of source to point of destination. HDMI is still considered a consumer format, but we're starting to see it more and more in the industrial arena. HDMI is the first video signal that allows 5.1 audio to be included in a single cable along with your video. HDMI is currently pretty fast and can handle 4K easily. The problem with HDMI cables is when you have many of them together, they can easily pop out. Any of you at home have a stereo receiver and you're plugging them in the back, you'll probably bump one of your other cables and it'll pop right out. So they made a strive to fix this problem with the HDMI. You can see here that they put a fastener above the port and they attached a fastener to the cable. The disadvantage to this is the proximity of the ports. They have to be further apart. It takes more real estate on your device. HDMI is a cheap signal, so if you're going for converter boxes or adapters or anything like that, Always try and, and convert to HDMI. DisplayPort is mainly involved with PCs, but it's one of my favorites because just like HDMI, it can handle 5.1 audio along with the video, but it also has other signals embedded in the cable as well. The best part about DisplayPort is that there's a button and there's latching pawls that you can see here and here. They will latch into the port and it will not come out. This has been HDMI's biggest fallback and they seem to have solved it. I hope to see more DisplayPort in the future in the industrial arena. Now I'd like to go over some of the ways that we can convert one video signal to another. Let's start out with analog. For analog, there's many different ways of doing it. We have here VGA to a component with audio or a YC or S video connector. Here I have an S video that breaks out into a YC which is a B and C connector. Here I have a VGA that breaks out into composite RGB with a sync. I have DVI that converts to VGA. It does this through the four pins that we mentioned before. Here I have a Y, PB, and PR, which is component to a DVI. I have a VGA to a DVI, and I have a VGA to a DVI. For digital video, there's numerous ways of converting one video signal to the other. It usually only involves a dongle or a cable. Over here, I have a HDMI to DVI-D dual link. I have an HDMI to DVI-D different form format so it can fit in a, a tighter space. I have an HDMI to DVI female dongle, a display port to DVI, and I have a display port to HDMI. Digital adapters are usually cheap and readily available. Next I'd like to go over how we convert an analog signal to a digital signal or how we change a low resolution digital signal to a high definition digital signal. These are called video scalers. I have multiple examples of these scalers here. Here I have a DAC70. It handles VGA or SDI or HDMI and it can convert it out to HDMI or HDSDI. And I have a Stortz OFIT DAU. I can take DVI, VGA, S-Video or Composite and it can output to DVI. You might be saying, why would I use a scaler? Well sometimes, like with this monitor right here, it only likes formal resolutions like 1080p. My laptop that's outputting this signal doesn't output 1080p at some oddball resolution which laptops are known for. The display normally would say there's no video signal even though there's clearly one being output by the laptop. But what I can do is I run it through a scaler, it scales it up to 1080p and now it can display perfectly on my monitor. This concludes a rough tutorial on video connections. If you have any questions please go ahead and leave them below. Give me a big old fat thumbs up and let me know if there's any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching.